What's going on everybody? It's David Palmer and Leo King and this is my show Uncut Astrology where I take off the mask and go deep behind the veil and give you this week's astrological forecast for the week of September 7th through the 13th of 2016. We are in between eclipses everybody so fate train time whoop whoop it's super sensitive we're in the middle of literally a lot of whether you want to call it karma or whether you want to call it the veil is thin a lot of that stuff going on right now but do you watch me every day do you get me on the leo king app go to the leokingapp.com and make sure that you get it on the apple or android stores or you can watch on your computer if you didn't know just by going to the leokingapp.com and clicking on the computer aspect and of course this week is my huge show and conference in las vegas it's a three-day show i'm doing events i'm doing djing but more importantly i'm doing a huge conference on saturday with an eight-hour astrology presentation live with people there we have over 50 people who have already are attending so if you want to meet other people that are all into astrology or into crazy spirituality and you want to hang out and be part of the party don't miss out I have a pay-per-view option available go to leokingevents.com or I have one day and three day tickets available or if you just want to even just show up on Friday for part of the party you can do that as well for the cheapest get it all at leokingevents.com here we are peeps in between eclipses Although at the end of this week that I'm talking about, we won't be in the eclipse yet. The next eclipse is September 16th. Write that down in your folder, wherever. And ironically enough, September 16th when this eclipse is happening is on a Friday. So get ready for next Friday because that's kind of the culmination point of a lot of this energy that's been going on. But none to say the less, we have a lot going on. First things first. Sun is trining Pluto. Those two planets need to get along because when they don't get along, you're dealing with life and death. The Sun brings life, it's Leo. Pluto, Scorpio brings death and, you know, rebirth. The good news is this is a very rebirthing time. And what I think this is about is getting to the bottom of your deepest emotional wants and needs and needing to let them out. And that's hard. When Jupiter's at the last degree of Virgo like it is coming into this week, uh, you know, it's hard, you know, we want life to be a certain way and we want certain desires and we're wanting it to all make this extreme masterpiece that might be almost impossible to make. I think that there's a part where you need to understand your desires, understand your wants and needs and realize that they can be made by looking at other options, by looking at other directions. That's what Saturn and Sagittarius is teaching us, is learning to look outside the box, looking for different options. Jupiter, when it's in Virgo though, doesn't see a lot of options. He goes, no, it's gotta be this exact way and it's gotta be painted this way and it's gotta smell this way and it's gotta look this way and it's gotta taste this way and it's gotta, you know, it's almost like a crazy cook that's like trying to build a crazy meal and it's like, oh my gosh, dude, are you really asking for Alaskan crab from Alaska that was picked at four in the morning and it was only picked on a really weird boat that you think has good juju. It's like, oh my gosh, just like go get the crab. You know, you're going to make it great. This is a time in our life where we're realizing we can make greatness, but we need to expose it. We need to let it out. This is a Mercury retrograde time. Not the easiest time, especially in Virgo where we're rethinking things. We're also rethinking and looking at our life from a whole different direction and realizing that we can manifest life in a whole different way. So that's the good news. The hard news about this week is, are you able to let a reset happen in your life? Let bygones be bygones, let the past be the past, and start over. We all get a big reset button with a solar eclipse that happened in the last week and a half with a sun trine Pluto, but even more importantly with the moon passing through Scorpio during this sun trine Pluto, this is a huge reset. Take the reset, take the new, but also at the same time, take your perception, take, take the life that you want and realize you can have what you want with the things that are around. Maybe go deeper into them. Maybe expose your feelings more. Sometimes we actually don't speak up what we really want in order to get what we want. So when I go to McDonald's and I order a number one and I really don't want mustard on it, if I'm too afraid to say, oh, well, do you think you can't put the mustard on it, man? If, I, if I'm just like hoping somehow mustard ain't gonna be on the Big Mac, guess what? Mustard's coming on that goddamn Big Mac whether you like it or not. There's a part of you that has to let it out. Jupiter at the end of Virgo could feel like 
you know, it's the intestinal tract. It's like, it can feel like you have a hemorrhoid. It can feel like you're backed up. And there's a part of you, especially with the sun train Pluto, needing to let it all out, needing to let it go. It's in earth signs, it's in Capricorn, it's in Virgo. This is where you can create whatever life you want, but you gotta expose it, you gotta figure it out. Mercury retrograde, you gotta say something, even though it might come from a weird angle, it might be coming from a weird place, but you, you know what? What do you got to lose? What do you got to lose? You got nothing to lose. I think that this week is all about you've got nothing to lose. The moon comes into a quarter square uh, to the sun in Sagittarius, which squares Virgo, and it's going to square Mercury retrograde, and it's going to square the sun. But what it's not going to square is Jupiter. That's because Jupiter comes into Libra this week. On Friday, right when the moon's getting ready to come, it's in Sagittarius, this means huge new options that you're not realizing. Huge new positivity that is bringing light to things, that is finding that there are ways to work things out. There are ways to make connections happen. There are ways to make this crazy, radical, desired story happen by learning to weigh things out, to see both sides of things, to not to realize that, you know, you can't just have your ego rush into it and be like, I want it this way, and then if it doesn't happen this way, it's over and it's done and it's not gonna work and I'm out of here. That's not gonna work. Jupiter and Libra saying, hey, the good luck comes when you find compromise. It finds when you actually work together. You weigh things out. You see what one side looks like, you see what the other side looks like. Then you make a decision. You know, and I think that came, is hard. When Jupiter comes out of Virgo and when it's so specific on the life that we want, when there's all this energy in Pisces making us feel like we have energy and then making it feel like, oh, maybe I just wanna say F this and screw this. This is a time where it's like, no, there's so much Earth and the North Node is n so close to the sun, it's sensitive. Focus on how to keep the reality together. Focus on ways to figure out problems, figure out ways, figure out solutions. This is a time where Saturn squares Neptune because right after Jupiter comes into Libra on Friday, which it will be here for 13 months. So Jupiter and Libra we're gonna be talking about for the next year. I hope you guys are ready to hear Jupiter and Libra for the next 13 months. But Jupiter and Libra is also deals with relationships. But I'm going ahead of myself because Saturn square Neptune happens this weekend. And this means that the reality is very all over the place. It's flexible. Nobody knows where the hell they're going. Next week, you don't even know where you're going. Everybody's just like, where is this going? How is this going to work? I don't, I don't really know. That's okay. Blind corners are actually, I think, the best place to go. You know why? If I were to give you it in a Christian way, do you really think the stairway to heaven wouldn't have this blind corner? Imagine dying and then going, where am I going next? It wouldn't be like Trump Tower and you know, with gold arches and you know, red carpet. Like there's this not knowing and there's this trusting that it's all going in the right direction. And I think you need to be willing to accept that, that things can lead in the right direction, that the turn around this corner, even though you have no effing clue where the hell it's going, it's leading in a direction that's guided by spirit, that's pulling you into a direction that you need to find, and that is only gonna work if you're open if you're open to other directions, if you're open to places you've never been before. That's what Saturn and Sagittarius is all about, being open to new places, being hopeful for new situations, being aware of that there are more roads to take than you might realize. There's not just one road, there's many roads. And I think that's what Jupiter and Libra is gonna help us finally sit into. Even though I say this right now, you might look at your life and go, I don't know if I really feel that way yet. You watch by this weekend, especially with all the energy, Saturn square Neptune, Jupiter coming into Libra, uh, Moon and Sagittarius. Do you think that's all coincidence? I don't think so. It's all really aimed for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then of course, Venus square Pluto this weekend, where we have to make big dedications and big commitments that maybe we're not ready to make. On the other hand, maybe when that comes, we cut it off. Or maybe we just get to the bottom and let out everything that we're feeling in relationships. Because it's Venus and Pluto. And when they make a square in your relationships, in your projects, in your, your values, you need to really expose where you're feeling. And it's kind of difficult. Venus or Pluto's in Capricorn. Venus is in uh, Libra. Pluto in Capricorn is really harsh. It's like, I want this in my life and I need to get here. Venus in, in Libra is like, well, can we negotiate to get there? It's like, well, I don't know. 
Capricorn's kind of like, I've got this road to go to, and if you're not willing to go there with me and you're not willing to do there, especially because it's Pluto, it's like, sorry, I don't know if we can make a deal. So rather confusing times. Not, uh, a good way to put Saturn square Neptune is you don't know where anything is turning in any relationship, in any business, in anything. It's all pretty blind around the corner. And so you ha we have to get around the corner. And the corner is this week and the next week with the lunar eclipse coming on the 16th. A lot of the main corner is this weekend though. You'll start to see a little bit of the light and at least the smell and the weather and the taste of where things are starting to go by at the end of this weekend and into Monday and Tuesday. The reason why, as we exit this week, we are gonna have the Sun square Mars. And this Sun square Mars is gonna be really intense because it's building up a lot of intensity of making a decision on who you wanna be, where you wanna go, what direction you're gonna take. And you're going to have to come, the sun is in Virgo, you're going to have to come with some sort of life that you identify with, that you really want, and, and, and where you believe that you can go. And a lot of this is realizing that the blind corner is the adventure of life of where you want to go. That it's not about the destination as much as it is the journey. And so we all want this destination, but that journey, that destination, that place that we're going, it isn't the easiest place to see. We're so used to like seeing the destination and thinking that we're going to get there just and, 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 and we're just going there. I think I always look at it like Christopher, uh, and fuck Christopher Columbus, actually. <laughs> I just said that. Lewis and Clark, to me, had much more of a, of a weird journey because they came to map out the U.S. And they also went west and didn't know what was there. They didn't know if they were even, you know, where it was all going to go. And they ran into bears and rivers and snow and mountains and they mapped up this whole place. But they had no idea what it was going to look like. And their drawings that they brought back in their journal is what taught people and showed people what's over there and kind of gave people the whole kind of like, okay, let's start going. At least somebody's been there. We're in a place where we are all in ourselves, Lewis and Clark. We are all about to go take this journey, and who knows where the hell it is. And you know what's funny is even though that's what life is, we don't usually feel that way. We usually feel like we at least know where it's steering. We at least know where it's going because we've felt like we've been on roads like this before. But I can tell you 100% the journeys, the adventures, and the roads that you're going and you're picking right now in your life, you really don't know where it's going to go next. And that's exciting, and that's cool, and that means that anything is possible and that you can go anywhere. But the courage to let out your true feelings, to really let out who you are, to really go for what you want in your life, while maintaining a sense of workability, compromise, and compassion, I would call that a week of learning to be a master. Because if you look at the two major squares this week, there's three major squares. Sun and moon, not easy. That's a wake up call. A wake up of where your life's going and where it really is. Two, Venus square Pluto. What you value, the kind of partnerships you want, the kind of things you want in your life, but can you really see a commitment there and can it really get to the bottom and is it on the right path? So they're kind of similar. The sun, moon square and the Venus Pluto square are very similar in saying, is the life you want and is the reality matching and do they fit together? It's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle this week. It's like, do these pieces fit together? Am I a middle piece trying to get together with an end piece? In all aspects of your life. And then it ends with the sun square Mars, which is very harsh and intense. It's your soul having to step up, find courage, take direction, and go where you want to go while a Jupiter is in Libra showing that we have to do this with a graceful way. Not simple, but can be done, will be done, and I think will blow your mind that even though, yes, things are intense right now, you'll see with this Jupiter and Libra bringing some sort of edge off, especially by this weekend's like Sunday and Monday, when, when, or Saturday and Sunday, when the moon's in Capricorn, 
we got Jupiter in Libra, and we're out of that much mutable energy. Having Jupiter in the biggest, is the biggest planet in a mutable sign during the middle of a mutable cross is a little bit too much, or a mutable T-square. Having Jupiter move out of this space, having the moon move out of this space means that life is finally going to not be so erratic, even though we're in between fucking eclipses. We can actually get through this and we can actually start to breathe through this craziness and we can all prepare for next week when the true exit of this portal and we go head first into the other side of this blind corner, which we're all getting ready for. This is the excitement the load up and the seeing where really you really want to go so you know when you enter this blind corner you enter this boat or you enter this horse or you enter whatever the hell you're gonna ride and it might feel like you're blindfolded you know you can go there it's almost like Neo in the Matrix at the very end of the movie he loses his eyesight right at the very end of the Matrix revolutions or revelations the last one and what happens he senses and he feels and he knows how to get to the last city. He doesn't even need his eyes. In many aspects, try tapping into that this week for when that eclipse comes, it's your time to step up and really go into that blind corner. But you got to know it will lead you into the right place. This weekend I'll be out in Las Vegas, so if you want to join me Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, there are tickets available out in Vegas. So if you want to come to Vegas, come and stay, come and join the whole festivities, but more importantly the conference, which is Saturday and Sunday. You can watch the pay-per-view version, which is Saturday, by getting it at leokingevents.com, or if you want a ticket, reach out to me and get it at leokingevents.com as well. And of course, if you want to win a free reading with me, every week I pick a winner. And I actually write on the back your birthday and a couple notes about what I think and then I snail mail this for you. Check that out by sharing it on my Facebook. I pick a winner once a week. Share this video and you have an opportunity to win that reading. Thanks so much for all your support. I truly appreciate it. Hope to see you at Hope in the Desert, whether it's in person or on pay-per-view. We have a crazy pay-per-view planned. Multiple cameras linked up to the whole presentation. It's not just a camera sitting in a room. Put it that way. Love you all so much. Thank you so much for all the support. I truly appreciate it. And I will see you on the next Uncut.